Good morning, friends. It's good to welcome you on this wet and reek morning, but it's a Lord's Day, and it's good to be able to gather together. His name, thank you for braving the, the elements, and we welcome those who join us from their homes as well. Just a couple of um, announcements. Last week I said I would confirm our harvest arrangements, uh, which should have been this weekend. Um, our harvest will take place on Sunday the 25th of October, and all being well, our special guest will be our divisional commander, Lieutenant Colonel Carol Bailey. Obviously, uh, during our harvest service, we normally take part in our altar service, and, and that will not be able to be done in the same way, um, but we still would encourage you to give in your harvest offerings, and we'll share how that can be done in the newsletter and um, in next week's announcements as well. Um, just to say as well that to remember um, Sandra Smith in your prayers, um, she's unwell. Um, she's had a little scare. She's she's now um, at home, um, having um, been into the hospital. So she's 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 recovering at home um, from Bell's palsy. So if you can remember her in your prayers, I'm sure she'll appreciate that and will feel the benefit of knowing that her church family are remembering her in prayer at this time. And we remember too those who are on holidays, those who can't be here for other reasons as well. We we continue to pray for our core family. We remember too Richard and Pam as they um, move south and as you may have seen as well in the newsletter we remember Ken and Ruth as they prepare to to move south as well. Um, We just want to remember our core family at this time. We're going to start this morning by sharing together um, the great song that says praise him, praise him, Jesus our blessed redeemer, sing O earth his wonderful love proclaim. Hail him, hail him, highest archangels in glory, strength and honour give to his holy name. And you'll see from the screen a moment ago, sorry Paul, Um, you'll see from the screen a moment ago that the um, theme for this morning is, who is your shepherd? And in that first verse it says, like a shepherd, Jesus will guard his children in his arms. He carries them all day long. I pray that's our, that's our experience today as we come together and worship. So let's um, sing in our hearts the words of this great song of praise.
Praise him. Praise him. Praise the one who journeys with us throughout life's journey. As we come into a time of reflection, a time to, to pray, a time to still ourselves before the Lord. Fraser's going to play for us the beautiful melody, Trust in God, which goes to the words of Song 531, As the varied way of life we journey. And the last verse says, In the days of peace and golden sunshine, in the days of joy or days of woe, there is confidence in him who holds us. There is light to guide us here below and beyond the weights, the heights of rapture, where all earthly joys transcended fate in the glory of the Saviour's presence and the home eternal he has made. As we listen, as we pray, as we meditate on the words of this song, let's remember that we aren't on this earthly journey on our own, that God walks with us in the good days and in the difficult days. Let's listen. Father God, we thank you that we don't journey on this earth alone. Even in these days where we've been separated, you've been with us. We thank you that we've been able to journey together again in this place, either in person or continuing to connect from home, and that we're able to connect, although in smaller groups, with our friends and loved ones out in the community we thank you that you journey with us in those days where we are happy and content with our lives but you also journey with us in those days where we find it difficult 
in those days where we don't know which way to go. We ask that you would be close to us, that we would feel your presence with us as we journey, that you may help us when we struggle to see you walking alongside us. Help us to have confidence knowing that you journey with us so that we won't struggle along trying to do it in our own strength. But we'll know you as our strength and guide. We bring before you today our core family and our community in these strange and confusing times in our world. And I pray that you would continue to do great things through us, your people. Do great things within our communities. And whether the days ahead are days of sunshine or days like today full of rain, may your hand guide us. May your will for us be done. We think of those in our world, those whom we know, who aren't aware of that precious experience of knowing what it is to walk with you to know you walk alongside us and we bring you bef- before you those people known to us Father God use us put people in their lives to point them towards you who journeys alongside them Father God would you bless us would you speak to us would you encourage us would you comfort us as we see here together this day. Amen and amen. A few weeks ago, I mentioned that it would be good to hear how God is at work in people's lives, how we are seeing him as we learn to, to worship in our everyday, as we take God out of the Sunday box. And um, Gina is going to share for us from our seat this morning. She'll stand where she is. Um, but you're able to hear her because she'll be on the microphone. She's going to share something of what God's doing in her life um, in these days, and we um, want to uh, give Gina some encouragement as she does that. Thank you. Morning, everyone. I have to stand up. I'm sorry. (laughs) It was quite challenging, actually, to be asked to give a testimony, because that's when you start thinking, well, what can I say? What can I say? Can you hear me now? (laughs) So, um, and then you think, well, what am I doing now? You know, we've talked about the front line. And who are the front line? They're the people we meet every day. They're the people that we, um, we sit and have a cup of coffee with. We sit sometimes, well, not so much on the bus these days. But, um, and that had been an experience of mine that, that goes way back. And I used to spend my time in the morning before I went out, before John got up actually, giving my day to the Lord and saying, you know, will you lead and guide and give me opportunities? And they just flowed, absolutely flowed. He would tell me one day I was to go and visit a friend in another village. And when I went, I found there was a need. Um, I might pop in for a cup of tea somewhere and someone would sit beside me, and there was a need. And it it became just like, as easy as breathing to share and to talk about God. There was no effort, there was no awkwardness, it was just so easy. And then I was thinking about later on what it's like for me now. And although I don't hide my light under a bushel, I don't think that I'm as open as I used to be to talking about God. I listen to people and I go and I pray. But I don't tend to speak to them quite as much on the hoof as I used to and I was thinking maybe things are a bit more difficult now but then I thought no I think the difference is in me I no longer get up early 
and spend time with the Lord in the way that I used to. I tend to spend my time with him in the evening after the events of the day. And I think that is a key, looking back in my own life, that if we will give the Lord that time before we begin our day, he can use us. He can make things happen. And you won't have to worry about it. It will just flow. He will lead who you talk to, who you bump into. And even if you never see that person again, be assured that it's been important. That somewhere down the line, they will remember what you said. Somewhere down the line, God will use that. So never think that I'm not good with people, I can't, I can't talk about things. And You just be yourself and let God lead and get, let God open the doors for you. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Gina, for those words of challenge for us to consider what it means in these different days to be able to offer up our day um, to the Lord in a time that's very different to how we will have done that. I think for many people, the, the lockdown brought a much, for us as activists, brought a much time, a much period of where we, we needed that rest and restoration for ourselves. Um, but yeah, there's definitely that challenge to, um, to at the beginning of our days, to give a day to the Lord. And in recent weeks, Catherine and I have been um, using a, an app which helps us pray. And um, I just, as you were speaking, was reminded of this prayer that is the same prayer at the end of every day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. This is the same prayer. And I offer it as our prayer today. It may be a prayer each day. It says, Father, help me to live this day to the full being true to you in every way. Jesus, help me to give myself away to others, being kind to everyone I meet. Spirit, help me to love the lost, proclaiming Christ in all I do and say, Amen. Amen. May God continue to bless you, Gina. May God continue to bless each of us as we give each day over to him. And may we be amazed by the possibilities that come when we give ourselves over to him. I want to share with you just now a well-known story, um, I'm sure, to each of us from the Old Testament, a good old Sunday school story. Um, and you, you might want to, to read along with me. It's on your handout. Um, it's from 1 Samuel um, chapter 17, verses 32 to 51. It's the story of David and Goliath. David kills Goliath. Don't worry about this Philistine, David told Saul. I will go fight him. Don't be ridiculous, Saul replied. There's no way you can fight this Philistine and possibly win. You're only a boy. And he's been a man of war since his youth. But David persisted. I have been taking care of my father's sheep and goats, he said. When a lion or a bear comes to steal a lamb from the flock, I go after it with a club and rescue the lamb from its mouth. If the animal turns on me, I catch it by the jaw and club it to death. I have done this to both lions and bears, and I'll do it to this pagan Philistine too, for he has defied the armies of the living God. The Lord who rescued me from the claws of the lion and the bear will rescue me from the Philistine. So I finally consented. All right, go ahead, he said, and may the Lord be with you. Then Saul gave David his own armor, a bronze helmet and a coat of mail. David put it on, strapped the sword over it, and took a step or two to see what it was like, for he had not worn such things before. I can't go in these, he protested to Saul. I'm not used to them. So David took them off again. He picked up five smooth stones from a stream and put them into his shepherd's bag. Then armed only with his shepherd's staff and sling, he started across the valley to fight the Philistine. Goliath walked out towards David with his shield bearer ahead of him, sneering in contempt at his ruddy-faced boy. Am I a dog, he roared at David, that you come at me with a stick? 
And he cursed David by the names of his gods. Come over here and I'll give your flesh to the birds and wild animals, Goliath yelled. David replied to the Philistine, You come to me with sword, spear, and javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of heaven's armies, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. Today the Lord will conquer you, and I will kill you and cut off your head. And then I will give you the dead bodies of your men to the birds and wild animals, and the whole world will know that there is a God in Israel. And everyone assembled here will know that the Lord rescues his people, both but not with sword and spear. This is the Lord's battle, and he will give you to us. As Goliath moved closer to attack, David quickly ran out to meet him. Reaching into his shepherd's bag and taking out a stone, he hurled it with his sling and it hit the Philistine in the forehead. The stone sank in, and Goliath stumbled and fell face down on the ground. So David triumphed over the Philistine with only a sling and a stone. For he had no sword. Then David ran over and pulled Goliath's sword from his sheath. David used it to kill him and cut off his head. Amen. Sometimes when you <laughs> read from the scripture, you, you forget how graphic it can be. We, we sometimes perhaps glaze over it a little bit when we're um, telling it in Sunday schools, so it's not quite as graphic. But I wonder what jumped out to you as you read that there. A couple of weeks ago, um, as I was mentioned there, that prayer, that, that app came from, in that app we were looking at the story of Esther, Catherine and I, and I was reminded in the story of Esther um, that although God is not explicitly mentioned, it's very evident that he's at work in the story. And it was a reminder to me that one of the biggest things that we can realize or remember when we look at scripture is that it's all part of a bigger picture. It's all part of God's bigger story. Every story in some way is part of the bigger story of God, just as we who follow him today are part of that story. We should be able to find Jesus in the story. Perhaps we won't find him in every sentence, but in the passage, in the bigger picture, we see him, for it's part of God's story. So we've just shared that story of David and Goliath, a well-known story, a story which didn't need to be retold, but we'll read it again. And although it doesn't make up the basis of our Bible reading for this morning, I believe it helps bring our Bible reading, which will be Psalm 23, into the bigger picture of God, the bigger picture of his story. We know the story so well that we didn't need to read it, as we're familiar with it. But upon reading it again, I don't know about you, but something jumped out to me as I was rereading it. And that's the great thing about the Word of God. It's alive. It's the living word of God, and it speaks into our lives each time we open it up. And the line that jumped out to me was verse 45. You come to me with sword, spear, and javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of the heaven's armies, the God of the armies of Israel whom you have defiled. David has come in the name of the Lord. And that's what jumped out to me. Something else may have jumped out to you. He came in the name of the Lord of Heaven's armies. You know, the story of David and Goliath can teach us so much. A Sunday school classic. You can beat any giant in your life. Doesn't matter your age. Doesn't matter if people believe in you. You can defeat the enemy. All great teachings. But I was struck in the name of the Lord of heaven's army. Who is David's Lord? Well, he's an Israelite. So God is his Lord. He puts his complete trust in God. And interestingly, it would be David who later pens the words, the Lord is my shepherd, as we'll read in Psalm 23 in a few moments. David trusts God, gives himself in service, and God uses him to defeat Goliath in the name of the Lord. In obedience to his God. One man is used to free a whole nation. One man is used to free a nation. Does that sound familiar? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that, so, that whoever believes in him would have eternal life. Jesus gave his life in obedience to God. And through that salvation comes to whosoever through one life, David sets Israel free from the Philistines, and Jesus sets Israel and all mankind free from sin. 
Do you see the bigger picture? David was a shepherd boy. Jesus says in John 10, 11, I am the good shepherd. They're both shepherds. David, the shepherd of the sheep. Jesus, the shepherd of mankind. David brought down one huge giant. He set his people free in the name of the Lord. He put God first in his life. The shepherd boy made the Lord his shepherd. And so we ask ourselves this this morning the question, who is your shepherd? Who is your shepherd? Is the Lord your shepherd? Is he the one who guides you? Or are we guided by society? By friends and family who perhaps don't recognize them as his Lord, as their Lord? Are we guided by our own choices? Are we guided by fake news? When we live our lives for Christ, we do it in the name of the Lord. When we minister in his name, when we go to set the captives free, are we doing it in his name? In the name of the Lord who is our shepherd? Matthew 19, 26 says, Jesus says, with man this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. Whatever giants we face in our lives just now, for which there can be many, and we even share in some of those giants in these unusual times. Whatever giants we face today or that we face in future days, as an individual, as a family of God's people, as a core in these strange times, will the Lord continue to be our shepherd, the one who sets us free and is more than able, infinitely more than able to do more than we could ever imagine. He is able, more than able, if we make him the shepherd in our lives. We're going to listen to that chorus, Fraser will play it for us. He is able, more than able. Song 836. is able more than able we turn to our bible reading as we continue sharing the scripture and the words are on your hand again if you wish to follow and we pray that God would reveal himself afresh to us in this psalm of David the Lord is my shepherd I lack nothing he makes me lie down in green pastures he leads me beside quiet waters He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right path for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely, Your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. And before we look at those words, we'll listen to the song, The Lord's My Shepherd, and I will trust in you alone. Thank you. (laughs) 
The Lord's my shepherd, I'll not want. He makes me lie in pastures green. He leads me by the still, still waters. His goodness restores my soul. And I will trust in you. And I will trust in you. For your endless mercy follows me. Your goodness will. my ways in righteousness, and He anoints my head with oil, and my cup it overflows with joy. I feast on His good delights, and I I will trust in Jesus, and I will trust in Jesus, for your endless mercy follows me, your goodness will in you alone. Psalm 23. I just love Psalm 23. I'm sure many of us feel the same way. One of the most well-known pieces of Scripture. And you can understand why. Often used at funerals, which is nice. But let us not become the only time we turn to those words. For it has something to show us. It has its place within the big, bigger story of God, within the bigger picture. I said earlier, Psalm 23 is a psalm of David. And perhaps it could have been written in memory of that day that he took down the giant Goliath. I don't know. It could have been. The psalms are poetry. And when we take in the whole poem, it brings a fuller understanding. Psalm 23 is a psalm expressing trust in 
God. And if you look at uh, in the context of what God did for David when facing Goliath, you can see he has no reason to fear when trusting God. Psalms of trust express confidence and trust in God even in the presence of enemies. It is a psalmist's personal prayer of trust. This psalm refers to the threats and dangers in life that are real and have to be faced. But the psalmist recognizes that God is present and can be relied on in the midst of troubles. In Psalm 23, David speaks about and to a God who is imminent, a God who is my shepherd, a God who cares for me, a God who is personal, who knows all that he needs. The psalmist can declare, I shall not want. How can David say this? This is a key experience of God. God has proven his faithfulness to David. David's key experience, it could have been when facing Goliath. But there are numerous other trials. If you were to read in Sam, the book of Samuel, the trials that faced David in the years that followed. Perhaps, though, even more common to the people of that day, if we were to look at the bigger picture, is, of course, the story of the Exodus. The journey of bringing Israel out of Egypt, freeing them from oppression. David would know those stories as well. That story of deliverance and of provision. He can trust God and affirm I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. Does anyone know when a sheep lies down? What causes it to lie down? Oh, I used to. Well, maybe it's just the cows that do this, but I used to think it's because it was going to rain. <laughs> sheep lie down when they're full, when they have drank and eaten enough. God cares for us that we can lie in green pastures. This poem depicts the abundance of God, his abundant care. The psalm is full of moving images. I can see that there's an issue of getting the balance of resting and moving on. As a shepherd, you would need to get the balance correct to take best care of the sheep. If you didn't, then you would overtire your sheep. Too much moving and not enough rest. God leads us to lie down in green pastures. He knows the balance that we need. We're invited in Psalm 46 to be still and know that I am God. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, again, it's amazing what looking at the bigger picture reveals. You see, many battles in those days were fought in valleys. And so David perhaps uses this imagery to highlight that battle with Goliath or one of his other experiences. An imagery that was common to those in the day. David is saying, even though he walks in that valley, that time of war, that time of fear and anguish, he will fear no evil. As we walk with our brothers and sisters, not just in this country, but around the world, we travel together through a pandemic, a valley that none of us have tread before. Do we fear? Or do we trust the Lord? David goes on to describe that God prepares a table in the presence of his enemies. Yet his head is anointed with oil and his cup overflows. When God is on our side, the enemy can't do anything about it. Yes, we might not find ourselves in days of green pastures. We find ourselves in days where we feel surrounded by our enemies. But in those days, God still provides When we look into the psalm, we can see so many wonderful truths about God's faithfulness. Truths which we perhaps all know. Truths that we've each experienced at different points in our own journeys. Yet if we look at the whole psalm, we can see that the psalm forms a shape. And it's a shape that we go through, that we follow in life. And I just want to develop that shape for us, that image in our minds. 
The psalm begins with the Lord is my shepherd. At the very beginning, we see this image of the Lord being our shepherd and how he leads us into green pastures. What do shepherds do? They go ahead of the flock. They go to seek the green pastures. Go ahead to look for somewhere for the sheep to feed. The shepherd goes ahead, clearing the way, checking that the way ahead is clear and safe from danger. When we look at Jesus, the good shepherd, he talks about going ahead of us in John 14. If this were not so, would I have, not, would I have told you that I'm going to prepare a place for you? When everything is ready, I will come and get you. The good shepherd goes ahead of us, preparing each day for us, even our eternal home. The good shepherd goes ahead. He prepares and provides for us. Is he the shepherd in your life? The one who goes ahead. The next part of the shape comes in the middle verses where the shepherd walks beside us. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. In times of where life, where we are going through those darkest valleys, the good shepherd Jesus comes alongside us. He comes to help us, to comfort us, to support us. He comes to protect us, that image of the rod and the staff. Protection. Jesus, the good shepherd, comes amongst us, shares with us right in the very middle of the darkest of days, in those days of heartbreak and sorrow, in those days where nothing perhaps seems to be going right. The good shepherd comes alongside his flock, his sheep. And in Matthew eleven twenty eight, the good shepherd extends this invitation to come to me, all you that are weary and are ca- carrying heavy burdens. And I will give you rest. In the midst of all that can go on in our lives, will we accept the invitation of the Good Shepherd to go to Him as He walks beside us? Will we go to Him with those things that wearies us, that burdens us? What a friend we have in Jesus, all our sins and griefs to bear. Are we weak and heavy laden, cumbered with a load of prayer? care, precious Savior, still a refuge. Take it to the Lord in prayer. He will give you rest. And as we discovered earlier, he will give you rest through his abundant care. Not necessarily in days of green pastures, but he still prepares a feast for you in the presence of your enemies, for they can do nothing about it. Jesus is the good shepherd who goes ahead and comes along beside us. The shepherd who becomes the gate, the one who lies across the sheep pen, protecting the sheep from the wolves of the night, will he be your shepherd? The final part of the shape comes in those closing lines. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me the rest of my days. Follow me. The translation I like to use is the New Living Translation, which says, Surely your goodness and unfailing love will pursue me. Goodness and mercy follows me. It pursues me. And when I think of this, the shepherd following his sheep, pursuing them, I have this image in my mind of the shepherd running at the back of his flock, chasing and steering the sheep forward, encouraging them onwards. Come on, go, get in the right direction. I remember one time Catherine and I were taking a shortcut. It's always when I decide to take a shortcut, it's never really a shortcut. We were taking a crunchy road to, the, to Catherine's parents, thinking that that would be quicker, and we got stuck behind a herd of cows that were being herded from one sh- field to the other. And so the road was partially closed whilst they did this. Farmers up the front. But there was also a farmer at the back encouraging the cows along, because they were getting distracted by the strands of grass on the edge of the road, not realising that what awaited for them was a whole field of abundant provision. How often does God have to bring us back in line, push us back into the right direction? Have we become distracted by the grass on the side rather than the field, the green pastures that await us? Does the good shepherd come after us when we go astray? Yes, he does. Matthew 18, we read of the hundred sheep, don't we? One goes missing, and so he leaves the 99 to go find that last lost sheep. 
Do you follow the good shepherd knowing that if you were to wander off his path, that he would pursue you with his goodness, mercy, and unfailing love? What a wonderful saviour to have. A wonderful shepherd to guide us. When we look at Psalm 23, we see the image of this wonderful shepherd. When we look at the bigger picture, we see that this shepherd is the shepherd, the good shepherd, our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. And when we look at the psalm as a whole, we see that beautiful shape, the shepherd who goes ahead, the shepherd who comes alongside, and the shepherd who pursues us from behind. One thing about the psalms is that nothing's done by mistake. Everything's deliberate. And I believe that that shape is deliberate. That shape in Psalm 23 of the all-encompassing shepherd is deliberate. Why? Because I believe we need to recognize that the situations that make up this shape are the situations we face every day. Psalm 23 is a shape that we go through in our life as we journey There are days when we do feel so blessed that we have all that we need and that we feel we're truly in those green pastures. There are days when we are in the darkest valley, days when we need the love and comfort of Jesus. And then there are days where we do wander from the pathway, yet Jesus pursues after us, calling us, guiding us, nudging us back to the right path. These are all things that happen in life. And that shape is shown beautifully in Psalm 23. These things come and go. Life is full of shape, moving from one part to the next. As a varied way of life we journey, who is your shepherd? Who is guiding you? Is it the good shepherd? Like the psalmist David, have you made the Lord your shepherd? When we do, life's shape doesn't change we still have good days, we still have difficult days, we still get lost and go off track. But with the Lord as our shepherd, he knows how to respond to each of those shapes of a life and lead us to life everlasting. So will you follow the lead of the good shepherd? Will you in these moments bow the knee in the presence of the good shepherd, recognizing him as Lord in your life? We're going to listen to this beautiful song which says there are moments on our journey following the Lord where God illumines every step we take there are times when circumstances make perfect sense to us as we try to understand each move he makes and when the path grows dim and our questions have no answer turn to him bow the knee trust the heart of your father when the answer goes beyond what you can see. Thank you, Paul.
in the presence of the Lord who is our shepherd. We bow the knee and trust the heart of our Father. Amen and amen. May we bow the knee each day and place our trust in the Lord who is our shepherd. For we can say, I know thee who thou art and what thy healing name. For when my fading heart, the burden nigh or came, I saw thy footprints on my road where lately passed the Son of God. Let nothing draw me back or turn my heart from thee, but by the Calvary track bring me at last to see the courts of God, that city fair, and find my name is written there. Let's pray these words as we listen to Fraser. Thank you. May God go before you to lead you. May God go behind you to protect you. May God go beneath you to support you. And may God go beside you to befriend you. Do not be afraid. May the blessing of God, our Lord, the Good Shepherd, be with us each now and forevermore. Amen.